Hi, I'm Don. Today's video is actually my practice painting project before I was able to paint the metallic parts of this Fafnir run. Today, we're painting a miniature or a couple of miniatures from Printed Obsession, a Patreon partner. We are painting a lamp and a demon and basically this is golden demon painting but not the competition. I'm painting this model's gold. We are using my red grass glass palette and watch the video as we turn this demon into a golden demon. Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my studio. Other than these very awesome companies and brands, this channel won't be possible without my awesome patrons. So if you want to support the channel, do consider being a patron at my Patreon page. We start with any dark copper-ish metallic paint and then we mix this with black. This will be our underpainting. We are using a huge oil painting brush which I highly recommend especially for the initial heavy dry brushing because they're very durable and they do the job well. All metallic paints, regardless of solvent type, may it be lacquer, enamel, or acrylics, are semi-transparent, especially the gold paints. The semi-transparency or translucency of metallic paints is actually the reason why, for bigger models and especially for people who paint with locker paints, it's important to have a glossy black finish under painting. The glossy black under painting will help with the really like brilliant or a shiny finish of your metallic painting. So you might ask, why am I painting with acrylics? Instead of using lockers, if I'm going for a really shiny golden finish. Well, I have a couple of bottles of Alclad here which are the best metallic locker paints. But we're going to airbrush it and it's going to be boring. The, the video will be just airbrushing off like metallic paints and... I won't be able to do a voiceover because the video will be too short. <laughs> so kidding aside, dry brushing is a lot more fun than airbrushing. And also, I'm not into locker paint since I paint mostly miniatures. And when, in terms of miniatures, you don't really want super shiny finish because it kind of distracts you and it kind of like blurs. Not really blur, but distracts your eye and you can't really see the nice details of miniatures if you're painting with super glossy, super shiny metallic paints. That is not an excuse for the dullness of acrylic metallic paints though. I'm not a paint chemist but I think it's just the nature of acrylic paints. It's the binder, the resin or whatsoever but basically acrylic metallic paints tends to be duller or it tends to dull but basically it's not as shiny and as glossy as lacquer paints. The dullness is addressed by painting in different layers. Earlier in the video, we used a copper-ish teeny tin and mix it a bit with black so that we have a nice underpainting that is not too shiny. It will like give us a nice underpainting so that the gold now that you're seeing has better coverage. Also, you're not forced to like transition from really like immediate gold paint into black primer. We have like a transition color which was the underpainting. Also notice that we're using a smaller flat brush. The smaller brush will kind of limit like the coverage of our painting, making sure that we leave areas of the previous color which was our underpainting because we're using a smaller brush. Also, I'm applying the gold paint with a lighter pressure. 
Regardless if you're painting metallics or just ordinary paints, I highly recommend that you apply colors or you dry brush at least with two passes, two thin coats, so that you get a full coverage. A full coverage of the current color is important before you like switch to a lighter color. Another product that will kind of overcome the dullness of acrylic metallic paints is the Vallejo Metal Varnish. I highly recommend the metal varnish. You just have to thin it one is to one even with just water and airbrush it a couple of thin coats on the model and it will give you a shinier, glossier finish. However, I did not use metal varnish here so that you could see the actual effect or the actual finish of the paints we used. Now we paint highlights. So it's kind of weird if like for me before when I was doing gunpla which is just airbrushing of the metallic paints and flood it with wash it so that it looks good. With this one, with miniature painting, you still have to paint highlights. The highlights will sort of like give an illusion that the gold painting, the metallic painting is shinier than it is. As I said earlier, this painting project with Printed Obsession Miniatures is a practice project before I was able to paint the Fafnir Rand. So I had to experiment and play around with different paints so that I get the results that I want. With this one, I use Cuttlefish because I really like the platinum for highlighting because instead of using the usual chrome or silver, this one has a warm tint so it blends a bit better on gold. As I expected, the highlighting worked even better on the more detailed Demon Miniature. The highlighting gave it like an optical illusion that the gold paint and the finish is shinier than it is because you have like the underpainting, the actual gold paint, and now the highlight colors. So it looks a bit more shiny and it gave more definition to the details, especially to this Demon Miniature. So this video is kind of special because this doesn't have a Patreon video version because it's just a deliberate practice video. I was telling my patrons that once in a while, you should do deliberate practices like this one so that you'll be more confident with your painting. If you're not familiar with your paints, you really have to practice with them even with just one project or even on just a piece of like plastic or something prime plastic so that if you're more confident and you know how the paints will look like you will be painting faster and you're going to produce better miniatures so as i've said this project was actually finished before the Fafnir ran, which is our current video at my YouTube channel. And I was able to be a bit more confident in my true metallic metal painting, which is I'm not used to. I'm more comfortable with my NMM painting. And with TMM, I kind of struggle to give it more contrast. But this one, I'm very, very happy with the result. It's just basically three colors plus black. You could actually apply a bit more like ink washes to the recesses to give it a bit more color depth. And you'll have a really nicely painted miniature. Again, the miniatures that we use here are from Printed Obsession, my Patreon partner. Do check them out because they have a ton of really fun stuff to paint and to play with. To be honest, I'm really really surprised with the result of the lamp painting because it's really big. It, uh, it will be easier if I just painted it with the airbrush and then applied loads of washes, especially oil paint washes because that is easier, especially for bigger models. And also with bigger models, you don't really have to paint the highlights anymore because they're already big, but it ended up really well. 
Now for the Golden Demon, I was kinda expecting it to look good because it has very nice details and painting highlights over all those details will definitely make it look really nice. And it ended up really nice. Basically, this project made me more confident in painting through metallic metal. However, our next video is non-metallic metal painting again. I painted, I just finished the Operative Umbral 6, the commemorative model from Warhammer TV and I painted it NMM. That's it, Pansit. My next video will be up tomorrow. It would be the Umbral 6. So if you don't want to miss a video, do subscribe. And if you want to support the channel further, do consider being a patron.